الحمد للہ وسلاۃ والسلام علی نبی محمد و علی وصحبی وسلم اما بعد احب اللہ ان حدیث رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ علی و صحبی و سلم which tells us about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feels about his commands about the bound, his boundaries that he has made for us and how we need to respect the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking his favor, seeking his forgiveness, seeking his mercy seeking to be more obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another narration about the fact that we sin Qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Kullu ibn Adam khatta wa khayran khattayina tawabun All the children of Adam Alayhi Salatu Wasallam commit sins and the best of those who sin are those who repent so that's why it's upon us, Sahaba Tifillah, to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often seeking His forgiveness, His favor, and His mercy. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La taqnatu fi rahmatillah. Do not despair at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Don't give up. Don't give up hope. Getting back to the matter at hand, the Habba Tafillah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, as collected in Bukhari, there is none having greater sense of ghira than Allah. And for that reason, He has forbidden shameful deeds and sins. And there is none who likes to be praised more than Allah does. Ruahu Bukhari. In this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, we see many, many, many benefits. And we see the ta'deem of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as far as tawheedillah. As far as Islamic monotheism, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to be praised. He loves to be worshipped. Because praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a type of worship. It's a type of ibadah. Nahmudullah tabarak wa ta'ala. We praise Allah the exalted and almighty. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He loves that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that you worship Him and Him alone. And this is why you see that Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah is constantly reminding you the duty of Ahlul Sunnah and a scholar of Ahlul Sunnah and a da'i of Ahlul Sunnah is that they call you to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. They call you to adhere to the prophetic methodology of da'wah ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so from this hadith, as this hadith is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, in the chapter of Tawheed, we see the relevance and the fiqh, the wisdom and the knowledge of Imam Bukhari, rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasi'ah, in that he put that hadith in this tarjima. And also from this hadith, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses the trait of ghira. 
he possesses the trait of Ghirav, this type of jealousy for his boundaries. And what we have to realize, Ahabat of Allah, is when we make Ithbat, when we affirm the Sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his attributes, we base that on a particular qaida or principle of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and how we understand the Nasus, which is derived from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that qaida, that principle, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem showing us this qaida is directly from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says laysa kamithlihi shay wa huwa sami'u basir he says that nothing nothing is is like unto him and he is the all hearing and all seeing here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates that there's any resemblance to him, that there's anything similar to him in likeness or that anything is in likeness or similar to him. He negates that and we negate that. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is affirming at the same time that he possesses those traits which we are familiar with as traits such as asami and albus and basir. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he hears and he sees. So how do we understand when he negated and at the same time affirmed traits that we're familiar with? Well, from the methodology and ittiqad of Ahl Sunnah is that they understand that we affirm those traits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we make no comparison with his creation. In that I have hearing, I have sight. But my sight does not go around that bend. I cannot go and see what's around behind those trees. Those trees where the bend in the river is, I can't see over there. But Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, who I do not resemble, and there is no likeness between our Lord Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and anything in his creation, he sees everything. What is under the river, what is above the river, everything that's contained within the heavens and earth, Tabarakutala, everything in creation. Wakadalika, and likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears and sees everything. We hear the birds. I can hear some birds. But think about all the noises and all the animals in the world. Or let's just say within a quarter of a mile. I can't hear anything. I can't hear the ants under these rocks. I can't hear whatever other creatures. I can't hear the dropping of the the leaves, the leaves dropping here. I can't hear the fish that swim in this river. Because my hearing and my sight, my sifat are limited. Unlike our Lord Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, who ala kulli shay'in qadir, and he is over all things Omnipotent. Likewise, we see that this trait of ghira that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has is due to what? It's not due to amur dunyawiya, things in the worldly life, although this takes place in our worldly life, but rather it's about His commandments because He prohibits us from sin from zina and all kinds of wicked sins. And that is a part of his ghira, meaning he hates that we do that. Those are things he does not like. He detests the fact that you transgress his boundaries because he laid those boundaries down for us. And those boundaries are defined for us in the book in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's why Habatifillah, it's very important that we do our best to strive to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we're always violating so many of His commandments and we're always making mistakes and sins and all of us are in need of forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ask Him, beg Him for His guidance and His favor and His mercy 
and seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan and the shayateen from amongst mankind and jinn. And seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from your own desires and your own evil souls and selves. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.